Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, Michelle and John. How are you doing? Hey, Michelle. Good to see you. Hi, John. Uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to bring up um, a volatile marriage. I, I had a, a, a couple of friends, married friends, who they didn't argue all the time. But boy, they had some knockdown, drag out battles, and they were. I, I would occasionally be an observer to this, and I thought to myself, how can this marriage survive? Uh, I, there are people like that, aren't there? That they just love to argue. Yeah, yeah, and it, it just, yeah, it pains me because it's unfortunate. I, I think that, I mean. I mean, basically what I want to talk about with that is that essentially some couples do find themselves in that kind of repeating cycle. And the problem is that once we get triggered, we're really only operating from our lizard brain. We're in that fight, flight, or freeze mode. We're basically like in our primitive, irrational, self-interested brain, and we're not going to be very skillful at resolving things. So it's not the time to resolve something is when your things get heated. You know, it sort of rem uh, reminds me of uh, uh, the, uh, the relationship that, that had some of this, uh, uh, that it was popularized on TV, was uh, uh, Lucy and Ricky. You know, Lucy, mm -hmm. you've got some explaining to do, and they have this big uh, fight, and they, but then, of course they always wind up together. So that's uh, uh, maybe, but on the other side, you have the Ike and Tina Turner, and that's a, a toxic uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're... Where does it, uh, do relationships uh, uh, have to be where you have an acceptable level of volatility and uh, others where, hey, wait, it's over. You really should be out of this kind of relationship. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, if there's any kind of like, you know, physical or emotional abuse, um, that's not a sustainable relationship for, you know, people to be in, obviously. But I would say that as long, I mean, there's research that as long as there's a five to one ratio of like positive to negative experiences in the relationship together, that it has like staying power. But I would say that those, I, I think you're basically destroying some of the relationship capital, so to speak, whenever you have one of those big kind of fights like that. And so what I want to talk about today is and share is that how to basically avoid that or minimize the possibility of these things happening. So we really want to use our, you know, rational uh, part of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, when we're having some kind of disagreement and we want to, you know, with decision making and, you know, moderate our, our affect and emotions. So basically I like to introduce all couples to have a sort of pause agreement. And this is basically is that we have this agreement that when we get upset, one of us gets triggered and we can hear that we're getting heated up we basically decide to pause. And there's some steps to this. So I, I was going to go into that. Yeah, please do. Yeah. I, I mean, okay. uh, it, it, that's great, a, a great approach because let's face it, when people argue or, or have, uh, you know, volatile, volatile relationships, it is all emotional and their brains aren't working on a rational level. And, we need tools. We need tools to calm down. Yeah, and, and, yeah. I mean, the things know, that can be said. Yeah. Sure. If if it were a schoolyard fight, the first thing you'd do is separate the two kids, <laughs> right? And but yeah. a husband or wife or a relationship, your spouse, there's nobody to separate us. Right. We have to separate ourselves. So, okay. so I, I'd love to hear the advice. Let's let's see some yeah, tools. Yeah. Yeah. So basically. Yeah. So the first one is really to agree that in advance, so you're being proactive, right? You're basically saying down the road, we might have something that's just going to like get us each heated. And uh, rather than continuing to go at it, let's just just both decide that we want to, to use this pause agreement. So you have to agree to have a pause agreement. And then ideally you have some kind of signal that you like a nonverbal, like, you know, maybe it's, you know, something like this or, whatever, something that you both agree on is the signal that the nonverbal signal that we need to have a pause. Or you might say it also, we both need to take a pause here. And either person can call the pause. They might notice that like, wow, I, I don't want to talk about this anymore because I know the next thing I'm going to say is not going to be good. So I need a pause agreement. Like you just say that. And so you call the pause agreement. Both people stop talking. You stop the nonverbal reactions. You stop the 
eye roll. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then you decide like, okay, I think I need, give me, I think I need like, give me 15 minutes, give me 30 minutes. Let's just take a pause. We go in another room and we do what we need to do to take some deep breaths, calm down. Sometimes you can even just sit quietly together in the same room. Sometimes you can even use touch if you are able to do that, you know, a hand on the other person's leg or holding hands if you feel like that it can be soothing. But sometimes you just need to be away from each other. And then after you calm down, when you're ready to come back together, you can constructively talk about, wow, when you said that, I immediately flashed into this and I'm sorry. And what I really meant, what I realized is this. And so then you can talk about it after you've calmed down. And even just, I'm noticing myself as I was, you know, as we get heated up, we tend to talk faster. We say things we might not mean. But once we are able to calm down, then we can have the discussion. And it, it's not a way to avoid issues. Like we need to do, we do, we do need to return to the issue to, to, um, to resolve things, but not at that moment when things are going crazy. Well, good, good point. Yeah, really so, good point. And I'm actually, uh, Michelle, um, John, and I have uh, discussed this with you before. We think it's time for you to write a book. So yeah. Uh, yeah. we know that you're not doing it, and we're not we're not just now pushing to say, oh, really, you're writing one now? It'll be. A... But Michelle, uh, all of the advice that you've been giving on on how people can uh, have better relationships. Uh, uh, I don't know whether you can come up with the the, uh, uh, the uh, Ten Commandments of uh, better relationships or uh, fifteen or the the thirteen secret power tools uh, of a uh, <laughs> uh, better relationship. But it's time for you to now write all these things down and come out with a, a book or uh, a constitution or something so that people uh, can look at them and say, "Oh, I could do these things and maybe improve my relationships." Uh, Michelle, I well, thank one. you for that. Yeah. And uh, I mean, these are things I've learned. I've learned tools from many, many people. I've been studying this for a long time and working with people. And so, um, you know, a lot of these are not my own. I, we kind of, you know, rework them. And but yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm looking forward to this chapter in the book. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.